Hey guys, Bob Morreale here with the Tuning School, and on today's Tech Tuesday, we're going to be discussing O2 sensors and how to understand them properly. Hey guys, welcome back. In order to really explain this properly, let's head on over to the VCM scanner now. All right, guys, so what we're going to do is talk about O2 sensors for a little bit here. We're going to talk about narrow bands, uh, wide bands, and then we're also going to review um, some more uh, troubleshooting with them in just a minute. So we're going to start with this scan we have from a uh, Corvette that we had in the shop here. And we're going to start just by looking at the narrow band of two sensors for a quick review. Now, uh, when the narrow band of two sensors are doing this oscillating effect here, uh, that means that the air fuel ratio is right at your stoic or stoichiometric number, typically 14.6 for uh, pump gas uh, with no uh, ethanol present. Um, and a lot of your pump gas today has about 10% or 15% ethanol, making it about 14.3 to 1. So um, if you uh, want to know what your air fuel ratio is, you can just have a quick glance at these. And if they are oscillating, you know that it's dancing right around that point. So if you're wideband, when you're setting it up, if you have it in one of the O2 sensor bungs, uh, you should be able to verify that it is reading accurately, at least if you're um, idle or part throttle cruising, because these narrow bands will be oscillating like this, which should indicate about 14.7 or 14.3, whatever your stoichiometric point is set to in the tune file. So we use that when we're tuning because oftentimes your wideband, and it doesn't matter if you have a $400 wideband or a $4,000 wideband, you're going to have a sensor go bad and you're going to be doing a full throttle pull and uh, so for example here in this case this vehicle was using our uh, Daytona sensors wideband 11.9 air fuel here supercharged car and you'll see throughout the pull it varied a little bit uh, all the way up to about a 12.5 air fuel and then kind of flattened out so here's the thing a lot of times during a pull you're gonna say there's something wrong with the car because your wideband is telling you something that doesn't seem right so maybe you're do doing a full throttle pull and it goes all the way to dead lean. Uh, and we get this tech support ticket a lot. Typically it's Z06 Corvette owners um, or shops that aren't used to tuning them. And they'll put a wideband in the wrong, uh, like a tail, a tail clamp in the wrong uh, tailpipe. So as the active exhaust opens, uh, the exhaust goes away from that one. So during full throttle, they'll be reading fine until about 4,000 RPM. And they'll see something like, like in our case here, we have 11s, 12s, 12s. And then all of a sudden, the air fuel ratio on the Dyna will shoot straight, you know, 18 to 1. Um, and then the reality is the car really was not that lean. And we, we probably get this tech support ticket two or three times a month. And you can verify that um, by looking at your narrow bands. So most people just ignore the narrow bands. But the reality is they will confirm or deny what your wideband is telling you. Now, in this case, you saw they were in the 14s here at idle and part throttle. And then at full throttle here they go ahead and they go rich. So the, the narrow bands won't tell you whether or not your air fuel ratio in this part here is 12.5 or you know 12.1. They, they're not that accurate. But the fact that they go full rich here, so this is in the high 800 millivolt range right here, high 800s pretty much the whole way, that tells you that your air fuel is richer than 14.7 or whatever your stoichiometric is calling for. So if you had that Z06 Corvette, for example, and, it, and your wideband suddenly said 18 to 1, well, you could look at this narrow band and say, well, wait a minute, it never really was 18 to 1. And we've had to go through this with multiple shop owners to explain to them, really, you just got the wideband in the wrong place. So that's one example of how narrow bands can actually be useful for you. So at a glance, you can say, you know, I know I'm rich enough that I'm not at least not at stoichiometric or leaner. Now, the opposite occurs sometimes. A car might go dead lean at full throttle. Or, or you think it is, in which case, if it really is, it will no longer stay up here on the rich side, which is over here in the eight, 900, or 1,000 millivolt range. It'll actually drop all the way down to 50 or 100 millivolts and go dead lean. That's how you would be able to confirm that your wideband is correct in saying that the air fuel really is something like 18 to 1, which is really bad. You really don't want to be in that situation. Um, so we're going to examine one more common O2 sensor um, tech support request or issue that we see. We're going to flip over to another scan file real quick here. This came in a week ago, 
and uh, the customer was explaining that the vehicle drove terribly and um, he's a shop owner working on uh, I believe it's a swap vehicle so uh, yeah just this scan is just a mess it's just a wreck but if you look you can just start by looking in the fueling section here and you can immediately start to determine that there's problems I mean if you start here by looking at these O2 sensors okay bank one sensor one pretty much is dead because it's flat the whole time or it's unplugged and in this case if you look far enough we pretty much determine it's not unplugged because it has some activity I mean you see a little spike here and a little drop here but it's pretty much dead um, bank 2 sensor 1, so driver side front sensor, is the active one, but if you look at it, it reads terribly. I mean, this is just not, not a very good signature for an O2 sensor. But what, what stood out to us was he could not get his fuel trims dialed in, and the car just would never idle and drive properly. It drove terribly. It would buck and spit. And no matter what he did with his fuel trims, he could never get it right. So we start by looking at those fuel trims and you see here they had reset from from what we presume was the upload or the start of the vehicle and if you look for trends you can identify a problem here so look at the short terms these two lighter uh, light blue and light purple and as the light blue starts to go negative the purple which is bank one the opposite starts to go positive so if you keep scrolling through here bank two is going negative pulling fuel bank one starts doing what adding fuel so if you see the trend of these things they're they're identical and they're fighting one another and there's only one way that these will fight one another they'll fight one another when the O2 sensors are wired backwards so as the computer attempts to correct the left bank it'll make the change to the right bank because it's got them backwards so this is uh, just another common issue that we see probably two or three times a month and we tell the guys, whether, whether it's a shop owner or an enthusiast, doesn't matter. Everybody always says, oh, it's impossible to put them backwards. I will tell you in this case, and pretty much any time you see this pattern, they're backwards. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video today. And for more high performance tuning knowledge, be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on social media. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay tuned.